Hello everyone, welcome back to Rough Cut Woodworking and for this series of videos we're going to show you from beginning to end how to make this end table. Now the end table, and get a better grip, has a drawer and it also has the top built in with a chessboard. So we're going to show you how to put this all together. Now a quick note on what woods you can use. You can use any of the wood, standard woods that I have in the shop. But remember for your chessboard, you're going to need blocks of wood that have highly alternating colors, you know, very different. For the one that we're going to build, I'm going to use alder for the framing, you know, the legs and around the outside. And for the chessboard itself, we're going to use walnut for the dark squares and maple for the light squares. However, I have cherry and oak and, and one or two other kinds of woods that you're welcome to mix and match and ask me about pricing if that changes at all. The first thing we're gonna start is the four legs. These legs are an inch and a half thick and they get tapered sharper as you go down on the table. So first we're gonna rough cut that and get those milled. Step one in cutting the legs is we first need to make a rough cut out of what's called six quarter material. Now make sure you've got the right material, whether it's alder or walnut or, or oak or whatever. So you're pulling the right wood. I'm happy to check it if you're not sure. First thing to check is when you pull it out, you'll notice first of all that six quarter lumber is actually about an inch and a half thick. So it's much thicker than our normal stock that we use for our other projects. But take a quick glance. And in this case, I see a large knot in the very end of the board. If that knot were further in, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But in this case, I can cut that knot off right here. Best guess, you don't need to really measure on the upcut saw. And then what we're gonna do is rough cut to 26 inches long. Our table, when it's finished, will be 26 inches tall. So minus the top, the thickness of the top, eventually we'll cut it to 25 and a quarter. So rough cut is 26. So set your upcut saw to 26. And in my case, I always cut off the factory end, always. But since I have a knot, I'm gonna cut a little more than our standard two inches and we'll cut 26. Okay, there's my knot. Now I slide down to 26 and cut again. And this one piece should be enough for all four legs side by side. The next step is we're going to run it through the jointer. We need a good edge. So we're gonna shave an edge flat and smooth and true it up. Now I was gonna mention previously, if your board ends up having a large knot in somewhere in the middle, go ahead and cut your legs as normal. I have epoxy that we can use and mix up and reinforce it. So there are things we can do to fill the knot. So don't worry about it if that's what you've got. So first, let's join it. It'll usually take one or two passes. So I got most of it. There's a little bit there and there left. Now we come here to the table saw, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut strips out so that they're the same thickness as they are width. Now I said when I picked this board up that six quarter lumber is about an inch and a half thick. And that's, that's true, but when it's milled down, it actually comes at a sixteenth shy of that. So we're actually at one and seven sixteenths, and that's very common with six quarter lumber. So what we need to do is set this to one and seven sixteenths. And we can just do that here on the tape measure on the table itself. That's one and seven sixteenths. But always make sure, because this wood is a little extra thick, you can raise the guard with the blade stopped, of course. Set the board next to the blade and make sure the blade is high enough to cut through it. Our other lumber, which is thinner, doesn't need the blade as high. So you're going to be turning the handle right in front of your knees, right as I'm standing here. It's right here on the table saw in the front. Turn it clockwise to raise the blade until the gullets, that's the dip between the teeth, is just above the board. So you want the teeth to protrude out the top. Once you have that set, turn it on and let's cut a couple of strips. Keep your hand behind the blade. Don't let your left hand go where the blade is. Then grab your push stick. 
all the way through. Keep your blade, your hand right here behind the blade. What I don't want to do is push here and pinch the blade, and you get burns. Notice at the very end of my cut, I kind of let go with my fingers. That, that makes it so I can't push. I don't want to push into the blade. When you're done, any of the waste that you had needs to be grabbed from the back. Never go for it from the front. That's when you get a thumb into the blade. Now you notice that the last cut, it kind of pinched a little. I couldn't really push, simply because that leftover piece fit perfectly between this little hold down and the, the splitter right here. So it just pinched. So I simply lifted it up in the back and then it went just fine. Please let me know if you're having any issues with that. It's an easy fix. It's not something you need to worry about. Uh, and we'll get you through. But now I have my four legs, and they're one and seven sixteenths both directions. So this should be a perfect square. And all we need to do now is just sand off some of the uneven parts of it. Now that I have my blocks cut to the correct squares, the correct size, width-wise, we need to cut them to length. So what we have to do on all of them is we're going to cut them down to 25 and a quarter. 25 and a quarter plus the three quarter top will be our 26. So I set this to 25.25, 25 and a quarter. And remember, you can do it on either this saw where I program it in or my other saw on the other side. They both work the same way. First, I need to trim an end because I have no idea if this cut is square. It could be a little off kilter because it was rough when I cut it. So I'm just going to trim a blade width or so off of this end. Throw it away. Now that this end is square, I slide it down to my stop and I can cut the other end to the correct length and repeat this on all four pieces. Once you've cut your legs to the proper width and now they're one and seven sixteenth both directions, we're gonna bring them to the sander to try to get some of those marks off. For example, some of my boards have some, some darker areas that never came off in the factory, and I want those sanded off, or at least a lot better than they are. Now keep in mind, if this dark area is only on one end of the leg, remember, we're gonna taper two sides of each leg. So if it's only on one end, it's gonna get cut off anyway. We can arrange it so that get, get, gets cut off. Some legs may have more of this than others, so I wanted to show you how to run them through the Y belt sander to sand some of that off. First, take a pencil, and you're gonna put a line down each leg on every side. So long lines on all four. Rotate them all 90 degrees and do it again. You're gonna put them all along the edges. Once that's done, we'll set it up just like normal. Turn on the air, which is over here. The air is on. Lower the table to about an inch by holding the down arrow. So I went a little over an inch. That's fine, just somewhere like that. Now, obviously, guys, this is bigger than an inch. So that's normal. You're going to have to go bigger than an inch and a half, which is about what these are. So just simply hold on to it until it gets to a little over one and a half. There's 1.6. And see if it fits under there. If it does, great. If it doesn't, go down a little further. So it fits under the knob right here. Press and hold the up arrow. And that's 1.45. That's exactly where it should be because we cut it a little less than one and a half. And you're ready to run them through. Now remember, we're gonna do all four sides, but we don't wanna raise the table until we've run it through two sides. We're gonna run it through this side and then this one. Then we raise the table and do the remaining two. Then we raise the table and do two more and so forth until all these pencil lines disappear. So it depends on how straight your boards are 
will tell you how many times it's going to go through the sander. It could be twice, it could be four, six times. It's hard to say, so let's get going. And remember, you can run them all at the same time, it doesn't matter. Once they come out, be very careful to keep them flat the way you ran them through and rotate them clockwise or counterclockwise just so you know they're all the same. So I turned on mine clockwise one turn and sent them through at the same setting. Then after this, we're going to raise it up and do it again. Now because these legs are fairly narrow, I actually tapped it twice. One, two. Remember, you don't want to hold it or it'll come up way too far. So just tap one, two. You'll see a little dot come on in the upper left corner each time so you'll know you got it. Now we rotate and do it again.